In regular Star's tradition of recording every single story I've ever told or have the ability to tell, I want to talk about my experiences with religion because I think this is pretty fundamentally different than most people who would come across this channel. Either they were atheists from a young age or they were Christians from a young age and became atheists over time. Um, there's probably one or two, maybe three uh, Christians who watch this channel. I doubt anyone of any other religions. There was a Muslim guy who watched my channel for a while, but besides those people, pretty much my whole audience is going to be atheists because a lot of my content is very atheistic. I talk a lot about the world being a kind of void. A lot of my videos are either depression centric in that they talk about that inherent lack of meaning or they're uplifting in saying embrace the lack of meaning and just do whatever bro. Um, so that that's generally the theme that's within a lot of my content not all of it and i can understand sort of christian people uh getting more out of the videos that are less related to that philosophy and maybe they just focus on those videos uh, maybe they enjoy hearing a different perspective but in general i think th this audience is is going to be leaning atheists um from a young age or just learning about it over time and becoming an atheist. But my my experience was very strange because I was raised as an atheist for all of the toddler, <coughs> all of the early years. Um, it wasn't until I was about seven, eight. I think I, I think it was, yeah, about seven, about eight when I, I was put into church for what my father said at the time was because he wanted me to be able to fit in with people more because I constantly was having problems with my cousins at the uh, at the large mansion-esque house that my grandma and grandpa on my mom's side had, which was essentially right beside of our house. You had to go up a huge hill. It was separated by farmland, but it was close to our house, this, this mansion-esque home. And... I constantly got bullied by those kids. I had a lot of really horrible negative experiences with those kids because all of those kids and the other family members, uncles, aunts, etc. would, uh, cousins of those people, members-in-law of those people, they would always be at that house because that house was just so large and I couldn't connect with any of them. I would randomly like bully people for no reason. The people who actually were nice to me, I would bully and the people who weren't nice to me, I would way overcompensate in my niceness too and I would end up getting really horribly bullied, like just really fucked up stuff that I, I don't want to recount right now or I don't know possibly ever I don't know um from from those kids like bad uh so I couldn't fit in needless to say I could not fit in and at this point you know my my grandma had died um my grandpa had moved to a whole other house in you know in in the same town uh, city, or it wasn't a city, but like, it, it was an area of people that had just over a thousand, and all of them were separated by trees. It, it was not a dense place by any means, but he was in the same place. Uh, it was just, you know, far, far down the road through the trees, etc., in a much, much smaller place because, you know, you don't want to be a lone king inside of a, a giant castle. He, did, he didn't really want to interact with people very much anymore after Grandma died. He just wanted to stay alone all of the time. And that's how he died, just, you know, alone in his, in his house. And so, um, I had a lot of really bad experiences with people early on. And I didn't want to interact with people very much early on. I wanted to spend my time alone... I was just sort of pushed into the encouragement of interacting with people uh, through my parents and through those family members who would, you know, try all the time. Pretty much every time I went up to my grandma and grandpa's house, I would always have church pushed on to me. Please go to church. Please cut your hair because I had really long hair as a kid. Um, you know, you look like a girl. You need to go to church, etc. And um, I, the, the sad thing was is that I really liked it 
when these family members would call me a girl or when they would say that I looked like a girl. The problem was is that it was always slanted with a negative connotation, so I would like feel bad about feeling good that I was described in, in a feminine way as a kid. And I would start getting angry at people um, for describing me that way because I just experienced so much bullying from these other kids there. Um, and so I had, I had a lot of negative social experiences with, um, you know, with family. Uh, be, those were the only people who I had ever had any experience interacting with. My father was thinking, well, maybe if they go to church, they'll be all right, they'll do okay, uh, and maybe they'll fit in. You know, I don't agree with any of this Christianity stuff or any religion for that matter, but hey, let's give it a shot. My mom, on the other hand, she saw that I had really terrible anger problems as a kid. I've talked a lot about this on the channel, about just how angry I was as a little kid. It was insane. I was like a, a nuclear terrorist. It's every little thing would send me into a rage. I would yell constantly. Um... I, I was a very, very angry kid. I was very defiant. Um, when I would get hit, it would make me want to do the bad thing more. That, that, was the, that was the kind of kid that I was. And so um, I, she thought that believing in God or fearing God would make me less angry. And that didn't work. Uh, I, I kept exhibiting the same behaviors because that's, that's not really, that's not really how psychology works. Like if someone has been exhibiting behaviors for a long time, believing in God isn't just going to automatically make them stop. Um, so she got frustrated with it because she was an atheist as well. And so both of my parents were just briefly putting me in church in order to uh, be become more like normal was basically the idea and it just didn't work um i don't really remember very much from church other than me just generally being awkward like i flipped someone off by accident for example because i had uh copied it from one of the older kids who was in church and i thought it just looked cool and i i just didn't know what flipping the bird was uh, I would say, because someone in the church, um, whenever it was time to eat lunch, would say, we have soda pop. And I would say, uh, oh no, I don't drink pop. I, uh, the pop is bad for you. I only drink soda. And um, when I said, I don't drink pop, they would go, oh, that's really good for you. And then I'd contradict it by saying, I only drink soda. Because I, I thought soda pop was like a candy kind of soda. I thought, in my own head, I saw it as like this worse version of soda, when in reality it's just a colloquialism. It's, it's just a different way of describing things based on being from a different place. Um, and that wasn't someone who was, you know, related to us by blood. That was someone who was married to someone else. So I, I would imagine they were probably, you know, from a different place. Um, but, but yeah, I, like, they gave me this really weird look. Uh, when we were eating hot dogs, I was used to hot dogs that looked red because, um... My parents would always get beef kosher hot dogs, so they, they looked red. They looked a specific way. And uh, at lunch, I would be eating a brown hot dog, and I would, I would just point at it. I would point at it and go, what kind of hot dog is this? What kind of hot dog is this? And I just kept repeating that at the lunch table um, with adults there over and over and over again um, because and and the uh the woman who was sitting next to me who made who I made the pop comment to that same day uh she she like like grabbed onto my shoulder and like whispered to me it's just a regular hot dog and i was thinking like what brand is this though like i'm used to eating red hot dogs that are made out of beef this is this is a brown hot dog that has this like soft um, you know, uh, look to it. It looks like it was boiled or something. The hot dogs I was used to eating were, you know, on a pan. You know, you, you saw the, the black marks on, on them from, from being cooked in a pan. And so I thought it was weird. It looked like hot dogs from television. I didn't want a hot dog from television. I, I wanted the hot dogs that I normally eat, which I didn't even like. I just didn't like the fact that it was different. So even after she said that, I kept pointing at it and saying, what kind of hot dog is this? What kind of hot dog is this? And she just got annoyed. I don't even remember if I ate, like, I think I ate like a little bit of it and I didn't want the rest of it. Um, but 
and I was, and I was, that was before I was like really hungry as a kid. Um, because when I got older, we started becoming more and more food scarce because, um, uh, my mom started managing the money more. And once she started managing the money more, we became a lot more poor. And that was the time when, um, I started eating a lot less, but back then I could afford to be picky because, you know, I, I had been, um, I had been able to eat more. Um, so during class, we kind of just went over the existing Bible stories. Like the only Bible story I really remember from back then, which I would repeat constantly to, um, uh, grandparents all the time. Yeah, I had to have been seven years old because, or either seven or six. Yeah, because this, this was, um, my grandma was alive and it was, it was, I think it was around the time she got diagnosed with cancer. It was before. It wasn't at the time she did. Um, so, yeah, I, I had I couldn't have been eight because she would have been dead by the time I was eight. Okay. Um, <laughs> but my, my memory coming back live on air. But um, so I would repeat this story about this golden calf who, uh, like a guy makes a golden calf that he worships and it's not endowed with the religion of Christ or something so he's a sinner and the calf doesn't heal him but then another guy prays to God and he gets healed and the message is if you pray to God you get healed because it's not false idolatry or whatever and I, I just really liked that calf story for some reason so I'd repeat it constantly that's literally the only story I remember from um from church uh i we were told about heaven and hell a lot oh wait no we we were told about not saying oh my god that was a really big deal in my church is that um they uh we would be told not to say oh my god we had a whole lesson about that about not using the lord's name in vain the, my whole family in general uh who weren't like my parents because my parents didn't give a shit they just cussed all the time around us but uh my whole family on my mom's side were like huge about not saying oh my god that's like a big deal to them um and so uh, if you ever did like people would get really really angry and so i had a whole lesson in in church about that that's pretty much the only other thing i remember other than one day we were asked in our little classroom um what our favorite place was and then after we all said what our favorite place was we were told that if we ever wanted to go to that place more than serve the lord then that would be like a sin or they said oh well what if i really love mcdonald's am i going to deny the lord's will they didn't use that wording but am, am i going to break the rules just so i can go to mcdonald's no i would not and it was sort of a, a lesson about hedonism, I guess. It, it didn't make a lot of sense to me at the time because I was just thinking, well, if that's my favorite place, why would I not just go to my favorite place? Um, which I don't think is quite the message I was supposed to be getting. In general, like, a lot of messages that they would try to give, I just wouldn't understand or they didn't make sense to me. Like, the idea of going to heaven, for example, I always thought was terrible because I saw it as, why would I want to be alive forever? Like, wouldn't being alive for that long just be suffering? Um, and... I think that's kind of a scary or maybe depressing thing uh, to think about when you're that age, you know, when you're that young to be thinking, well, this, this heaven place doesn't sound very good. Why would I want to be alive this long? Um, but, you know, it was sort of foreshadowing things to come, I guess. The first suicide attempt I ever had was when I was 10 years old. So it's not really much of a surprise that I was thinking things like that when I was about seven. Um, but yeah, I, I really didn't like the idea of going to heaven because I thought being alive forever is just my hell, you know? Um, and I, I really, really did not like that idea. And I thought hell was kind of cool in the sense that, like, the defiant people who break rules go there. And I really liked breaking rules as a kid. So I started kind of liking the idea of going to hell as opposed to going to heaven. And that was really not the message I was supposed to be getting. Um, and so... Uh, you know, we, we go like a two weeks of, of going to church or something. It's like a, a, a really minuscule amount of time. And then eventually 
I get into this argument with um, my father's friend's daughter about the existence of God, and I'm trying to explain that God exists. And like the next day on Sunday, I had to go to church. And basically, uh, my father's friend is not cool with this. He thinks this is dumb. And uh, I have a conversation with my father in the car as we're leaving, and um, he basically says, yeah, none of this is real. Um, it's, it's all based on books that were rewritten and retranslated a billion times. Uh, there, there's evidence in these specific places that actively contradict one another. There's no logic to it. It's not coherent. And he gave, like, a, like basically a long lecture about all of the logical contradictions in the Bible and the fact that the earth existed before that so the people who were writing it had no real perception of anything that was happening. Um, and it was all very, I wish I could remember a lot of the details because it was all really coherent the way he explained it. And after that I was just like, oh, so none of this is real, right? And it's like, yeah, of course there's no God. And ever since then, uh, I've basically just been an atheist. I tried to become Jewish. I tried to become Christian um, when I was like, uh, at various points when I was like 17, and those were very short arcs. I talked to some religious leaders about how to convert. I started reading a lot of the texts. I just could not dilute myself into believing that stuff, um, and I think I'd have to trace it back to my upbringing. Both very atheistic parents. I was explained the science behind things at a young age, so even when I was so depressed I wanted to convert to religion, it didn't work because it, I, I already had that upbringing of believing that it's retarded.